Today, in this video, we will be studying about the measures of central tendency. The measures of central tendency. What is the central tendency? Which means in the center. So, it refers to a central value or a represented value of a statistical series see whenever we have a statistical series there are a lot of numbers in that series so the central value or the average value re which represent the whole statistical series refers to your central tendency now let's understand what are the averages. An average is a figure that represents the whole group. See, let's suppose if we I talk about the weight of fourth class uh, students, then it would be around thirty to forty. The weight lies between thirty to forty. Now we will take the average of all the weights that are different different weights, and we come to the conclusion that the average weight. Is let's say 35 kgs so this average weight is representing all the figures in the statistical series now what are the various types of statistical averages see your averages are of two types that are your mathematical averages And your positional averages. Your further mathematical averages are of two, uh, three types: arithmetic mean geometric mean. Positional averages are further divided into three types that is your median, your partition value that are, that are your quartiles, deciles, percentiles and your mode. So these are the types of the central tendency we will be studying in the coming videos. Now what are the functions of averages, what the averages gives us? It gives us the brief description about the statistical data, about the statistical series we have. So the main purpose of an average is to present a simple and systematic description of the principal feature of the raw data. Second is comparison. Your central tendency or the averages helps in the comparison. Let's suppose we cannot compare individual income of all the Indians to the individually income with all the U.S. citizens. So what we do? Uh, what we do? We take the average income of all the citizens of India and we take the average income of all the citizens of U.S.A. and we compare it. So it helps in the comparison. Formulation of policies. We know that the per capita income of India is less than as compared to the other countries. So when we find out the average income or the per capita income, it helps the government to form the policies in order to make the, uh, increase the quality of income in India as well as in order to improve the per capita income. Statistical. Analysis 
Your averages constitute the basis of statistical analysis. If one knows the average marks secured by the student of a class in their different subjects, one can easily analyze the subjects in which the students are weak. So you, this helps in the statistical analysis. One value for all. See your average value as I told you is the value that represents the whole statistical data. So one value for all. It represents all the values in the statistical data. Now let's study the essentials of good average. What should the average constitute that it becomes effective to understand? So number one, it should be clear and stable definition. A good and satisfactory average should be clear and stable in definition. Representative. It should represent the statistical data. So it should be based on all the observation of the statistical series. Simplicity. Simplicity is another essential feature of a good average. It must be so simple that it is easily worked out. Certainty. Which means a good average must be certain in character. Only then an average value can be used on the basis of statistical analysis. Fifth comes your absolute number. A good average should be an absolute number that is a percentage or a relative value does not serve a good average. Sixth is least effect of the change in the sample. An average of a series should be least affected by a change in the sample on which the average is based. So let's suppose we have taken a series and one number uh, is um, missing or we have misprinted th that number. So your average be such that it should be least affected by any change in the sample. Algebraic treatment. A good average should be capable of further mathematical or algebraic treatments. So these are your essential of good averages. I hope you have completely understood the central tendency. The central tendency are the averages that you take. I hope you like our video. Please download our Scholars Learning app and enjoy the learning experience with us.